This video is about two Italian masterpieces in one, the novel The Leopard by Giuseppe Tomasi di Lampedusa and the film of the book by Luchino Visconti. There is no book which better encapsulates Italy than this one, at least in my opinion. One of the reasons for doing the video is that the book is widely read outside Italy and not everyone is familiar with the context in which it is set and it is a book which is well worth understanding. It tells the story of a noble Sicilian family, mainly set around the time of the Risorgimento, Italian unification, in the 1860s, but having been written in the 1950s, it's also about the more modern Italy. Its famous line that, if we want everything to stay as it is, everything has to change, continues to apply, whether to politics or the long-standing north-south divide in Italy. The political scandals of Tangentopoli in the 1990s swept away the old Italian political system, and yet nothing really seemed to change. The eponymous leopard Don Fabrizio, the Prince of Selina, is the latest in a long line of Sicilian aristocrats whose crest features a gattopardo, the name in Italian of the book, and strictly speaking a serval rather than a leopard, a much smaller type of wild cat. The serval would never have worked as the English title. Don Fabrizio has his troubles. He has financial worries as his landed estates no longer bring in the profits they used to. His favourite daughter is unwilling to marry. His wife no longer excites him and makes the sign of the cross after moments of intimacy. And his favourite but impoverished nephew, Tancredi, is mixed up in the unification movement, which is challenging the old order, epitomised by Don Fabrizio himself. There is a dead soldier outside his property and fighting in the town. At such times, empty houses are lost houses, says the prince, a line which I've been known to use even today. His pleasures are his astronomical telescopes, his mistress in the town, hunting, his dogs, especially Bendico, the Great Dane, food, which is never far away in the story, and the adventures of Tancredi, through which he experiences the interesting times which loom just over the horizon. He is at times the willing participant in the demise of the old order, which has overseen poverty and underdevelopment in Sicily and its replacement with a modern government, which supposedly will offer money, efficiency and investment. He encourages his nephew Tancredi to marry the beautiful daughter of Don Calogero, the local wheeler dealer or entrepreneur, who he learns may be illiterate with a wife not fit to be seen in public and child of the man known as Pepe Merda, but who can bring wealth to Tancredi and useful connections to the new Italy. In discussing the wedding arrangements, the prince and Don Calogero make clear to each other the nature of the transaction. It is in fact Tancredi who tells his uncle that everything must change in order that it will remain the same, and Don Fabrizio goes along with it. A liberal northern politician from Piemonte, Cavalier Chevalier, pleads with him to become a member of the new Senate of the Unified Italy, but the prince, who may accept the new order, does not want to be actively part of it. Chevalier promises that the poverty of Sicily will be changed by the new modern administration. All this shouldn't last, says the leopard, but it will. We were the leopards and lions, those who take our place will be the jackals and hyenas, and the whole lot of us, leopard, jackals and sheep, will all go on thinking ourselves the salt of the earth. There is much in the book which resonates today. He tells Chevalier that the Sicilians never want to improve for the simple reason that they think themselves perfect. Their vanity is stronger than their misery. There's an element of this in Italy today. Things won't change because even though so much is wrong, Deep down, many Italians don't want things to change. And who is to say they are wrong? Perhaps it isn't all about efficiency and being at the top of tables comparing countries' economic and social performance. It's easy to miss it for a non-Italian, but the story captures the shaky foundation of modern Italy, whose consequences are still with us today in the weak and divided Italian state. Tancredi first appears fighting for Garibaldi and his band of red shirts, but then appears in the uniform of the Piemontese army which will soon become the army of the new Italy, seemingly approving of the execution of some of his old comrades. The plebiscite or referendum in which the Sicilians vote to join the new Italy is shown to be a fraud. The prince votes yes to unification in support of Toncredi's father-in-law, Don Calogero, who proudly announces that 512 voted and every single one of them voted yes. But we learn later that Don Fabrizio's hunting companion, Don Ciccio, had voted no and that many others had done the same. Don Ciccio struggles to mask his disgust at the old order's willingness to tolerate, along with its own destruction, that of all those who depended on them, and hand it to the offspring of Pepe Merda.
For some people and regions, the modern Italy was built on electoral fraud and therefore not entirely legitimate. A highlight of the book, and definitely of the film, is a grand ball attended by a weary prince, an utterly out of place Don Calogero, and the very much at home Angelica with Tancredi. The banquet is sumptuous. Italian chef Antonio Carluccio even did a TV programme on the food of the leopard. Angelica asks the prince to dance and everyone leaves the dance floor and watches the much older prince and the young and beautiful Angelica make a magnificent couple. It's dignified rather than creepy. Lucky Tancredi, thinks the prince. I owe all this to you, uncle, says Angelica, for if you hadn't agreed, I don't know what would have happened. It would have happened anyway, says the prince, and the more cynical and producer says it was true. No Tancredi could ever have resisted that beauty united to that income. The book is about many things and full of contradictions and compromises. Everything must change so that nothing changes, but yet Lampedusa tells us that Don Fabrizio's Grand Palazzo in Palermo was in fact destroyed in the Second World War by an American bomb. Tancredi has joined the jackals in marrying Angelica, and we learn that it was a long but unhappy marriage. Flame for three year, ashes for thirty, said the prince of his own marriage. I fear I may have made it appear a sad story, which was not my intention and would be wrong. It's a wonderful book that makes you appreciate the country in which it is set. The people, the history, the food, smells, countryside, beauty, disorganisation, corruption and life itself which is to be celebrated. It may be a passing moment, but it's the only moment we have. Although it is a relatively short book, my edition is 187 pages, there's much more I could have said, as well as characters and themes I've not even mentioned. Almost every sentence is rich with meaning and subtlety, and I can't think of a better or more enjoyable book about Italy. Giuseppe Tomasi de Lampedusa was himself a Sicilian nobleman, and there is much of his family in The Prince. He was a literary dilettante, he published nothing during his lifetime, and the book was widely rejected. An affectionate account of the dog days of the Sicilian aristocracy, written by a man whose own family palazzo had been bombed and ransacked during the Second World War, was not the order of the day for publishers who told him it was unpublishable. In the bitterly divided Italy of the Communists and the Christian Democrats, the left wing loathed how the book presented the Sicilian working classes as passive and venal, not rising up to man the barricades as they should have been. And the right wing couldn't defend the old order as presented in the story. It's no coincidence that the book came to fame in the English-speaking world, less troubled by the nuances of Italian politics. The film, by Lucchino Visconti of 1963, deserves a video of its own too. A lavish production shot on location with Burt Lancaster, Alan Delon and Claudia Cardinale. Visconti too was born into a noble family, this time from Milan, and grew up in the family seat in the city centre. Although politically very different to Lampedusa, he came to a similar conclusion. The people were fooled by Garibaldi, and then they were destroyed by the Piemontesi who kept the social structure of the South just as it was, Visconti said. Plus a change, as they don't say in Italy. I hope you enjoyed this video and will check out The Leopard in one way or another. If you would like to see more videos about all things Italian, please do click the like button, subscribe, and do things which are friendly to the all-powerful YouTube algorithm. Mm -hmm.